Hello, I am Neeraj. Today I will discuss about forced learning. So, what is forced learning in deep learning? It will clear through a simple example. Suppose you have uh, four multi-choice questions, or uh, and uh, the condition is the answer of question one will be used to answer the question number two. An answer of question number two will be used to answer question number three, and similarly, it will propagate. Now, suppose by mistake you wrongly answered question number one, your all answers will be wrong, and your all effort will be useless. Now, suppose you made first answer correct, but Second answer wrong, so all the answer of all remaining questions will be wrong. So such kind of dependencies where the answering of some questions will depend upon the correct answer of previous questions require some special attention. Such type of scenarios happens in the deep learning also, especially when we. Use the sequence-based modeling like sequence-to-sequence -sequence predictions, machine translation, document summarizations, document tagging, image tagging, style transfer, and so many different kind of applications where we use sequence-to-sequence -sequence kind of models. Here, one sequence may be object, other sequence may be some text, or both can be some objects like that. So, in such kind of sequences, to avoid propagation of such kind of error, we generally use forced learning. So, the proposed method for forced learning are teacher forcing, scheduled sampling, and one other method which is which is also very popular that is professor forcing. But the professor forcing algorithm actually uses generative sampling based features. That's why we are not covering the, in this discussion. So we will cover this uh, in uh, next section with generative adversarial networks. So now here we just covered teacher forcing and scheduled sampling. Now to understand how teacher forcing is actually working and how it solves such kind of error propagations. I am just assuming that you know the sequence to sequence based model and uh, suppose you are applying some things like uh, machine translation like you are using some English input text and translating it to French or some any other language. So your input you already fed to the RNA network and output you are generating for, for, for French or some other things like a sequence to sequence kind of things. So, in the traditional RNA, generally it uses input which may be the output of the previous hidden layers, uh, previous block, LSTM or RNN block and hidden layer, hidden output or hidden layer output of the previous RNN block. So here you can see that RNN, first RNN takes the input from hidden layer NG0 second RNN uses uh, input from this uh, hidden layer input from this third uses the hidden layer input from this RNN like that so this is computed like this so hidden layer output at a time t actually contains the hidden layer output from the previous time interval and output of the previous time interval at previous time intervals from the LSTM block and some network parameter theta. So, the network parameter theta actually contains the, all the values that we use to, on these networks and some internal parameters that we use with RNN. But if it is the first layer, then it will just depend upon the input and network parameter. Also, how this output is computed. So this output 
in the current sequence uh, translation to compute this output like uh, here we compute, represented it as O0103 instead of Y. So this output it generally takes the hidden layer from RNN box and then apply some shock mix layer like we represented it as a output layer and then it generates some output O0. Similarly it generates the output. But to generate the output the traditional RNA generally it takes two different inputs like uh, hidden layer output from previous time steps and output from previous time steps. So it will take two output, two inputs sorry. Again this block will take input from previous output and input from previous hidden layer output. So it will propagate like this. Now this is the traditional way of doing this. So the traditional way of doing this generally suffer from this error that we discussed. Like right? if here we are making mistake, like it predicts something false. Suppose we have some different ground uh, ground root and this output is predicting something else then what will happen this will propagate through the next layers and what will happen with this it will take huge amount of data to correct those errors by the network and the next thing will happen like it will take a lot of time and even after lot of data and lot of time you may not get the good quality models after training so this is the process or the problem that we will face if we go through the traditional RNN way of training so in this case instead of directly providing this as an input we just discard it and we provide the ground truth like for O0 the ground truth is I1 for O1 the ground truth is I2 for O2 the ground truth is I3 we just uh, representing just named it like this for O3 the ground truth is uh, something and uh, for O N the ground truth is I1 so we just providing those ground truth directly as a teacher kind of things like a teacher forcing like they teaches like whatever the output will be use this as a ground truth to train the system so this is the teacher forcing so teacher forcing means using the ground truth for next stage output to train the system so that after training it will stay close to the ground truth actual ground truth of the output so this is the teacher forcing but what happens with this teacher forcing the positive thing is that I already discussed like it will take less time better quality output your output will be near to the ground truth and it will take less time means convergence will be faster so what may be the negative side so the negative side is several times we may not get actual representative data to train the system and a lot of things happens data insufficiency and lot of things may be possible so in several cases if you force the teacher then it means if you apply the teacher forcing then it will result in disaster suppose you are training a system to summarize something till training you can apply the teacher forcing because you have a ground truth with your data but in test suppose you consider just uh, try to think on test case do you have a ground truth in test case we generally take the input so we will have input document not its summary in our hand because we are going to calculate the summary we, we cannot use the summary from anywhere else so in that case we don't have that kind of teacher forcing kind of things teacher forcing input so if we don't have teacher forcing input then what we will do we will use the previous output as an input to the next level in the test process 
training process is fine but in the test process we will use this and as we don't have this in the test process so it will totally destroy the system several times it will totally destroy the system and this condition is known as exposure bias so this is a serious problem